So guys, so quick, I'm you going see on E. Um so hello everyone. I'm Yeko C and today we are going to do our final um section of the Oneida language department curriculum um first curriculum book and so if you're following along with the videos, this is the second part or part two of this last section or what we kind of call unit five in the book. So this is the book. Um, if you have this book, you could be following along. It's near the end of the book or um, some of our books are also two curriculums combined. So it could be in the middle. So this is the end of the first set or the first six months of what we call the first curriculum book. So generally we call it the first six months curriculum book because we it takes about six months to complete or get through at more of an average pace. So obviously if you're doing it a lot more than an average pace, it's gonna go by faster, it could take you longer. It's just a general um, kind of standard we have. So anyway, so we are going to finish up um, our first curriculum book here. And so these videos just follow along. This is just the content of every section in this book. So um, again, we have a few different versions of this book. So you might have an older one that has just the first six months curriculum book, um, or you might have a combined first and second six months curriculum book. And so if that's the case, it's going to be near the middle. Um, if it's if you have just the singular one, then it's going to be near the end. So we are going to cover the final section, though, of our first book. And so this video is just going to follow along with all the content in there. And this is basically the lecture and the overview, overview of the video. OK, so I think I'm going to get started here. Um, so this section covers wild and domestic animals. So the names for those animals, uh, we call it Nyadikaliodak or Nyadikanesquak. So Nyadikaliodak is all the kinds of wild animals and Nyadikanesquak is all the kinds of domestic animals. So we'll talk about that shortly. These are our new words and we will continue on. I just wanted to show the book because I don't think I've showed it in the other videos. So just because I, I mentioned it in the other videos, but I wanted to show it in this video so that you can see what I'm talking about. Um, so this is our cute little book. And so these things are taken right from the book. Um, however, if you don't have the book, you don't need it because everything's in this video also. So it is this is has all of the visuals in the video. Um, and so either is fine. It's you might just be using both. So that's just kind of the overview. So um, I've gone over this a few times. I think I'm going to keep moving on this as well. Like I said, this is the end of the first book, like I mentioned in, when I started. So just so you know, there is more beyond this, but this sets, sets you up with a solid foundation. Um, same thing here. It's just another way to look at it when we're talking about developing language proficiency. And so we um, tend to recommend a five-year track with our department in terms of second language acquisition of the Oneida language. And so right now, um, I'm just going to keep this as is. But if as you continue further, I'll talk more about this later on. And so my goal is to develop more videos for the second book within the next year. So just keep an eye out for that um, on our YouTube channel. Okay, so let's move on. <clears throat> like I mentioned, this last section of the book is broken into two parts. And we covered the first part, which was A stem nouns, C stem nouns, and colors. This section is going to cover wild and domestic animals. There are 12 wild animals and the names for those that we cover, and then eight domestic animals. Are these the only animals we have in our language? Names for them? No. This is just a base. Again, this is just a base. Same thing with nouns. The nouns we covered in the previous video, just a base. There's a lot more. Okay, so um, this is just going to give you a foundation. And so what the learner should know is uh, students or learners should be able to speak and pronounce them correctly, each of the words when they're spoken alone or when they're used in a sentence. Know the definition or the translation of each. and 
know the endings of the words if they are used in a sentence, be able to use a, um, the animal in a question and response format. So we will go over that. All right. So this is what we covered in our last um, video. A stem nouns, C stem nouns, and colors. So you learn a lot of new words, and we're going to keep adding to your vocabulary. All right. So wild animals, wild animals. Um, there's 12 total. Like I mentioned, the title of the section is called Nyade Galiodak. Nyade Galiodage means all of the wild animals. You may have heard that before, that word. Um, sometimes it's used in the opening or the Ohandu Galiwadekwa, like when they give thanks to the wild animals, they may use Nyade Galiodak. There's other words you can use as well to describe that um word of wild animals and things like that but sometimes this word is used so you may be familiar with it um so there's two categories of animals described in our language wild and domestic in this section um the learner is expected to answer either of the following questions and give a response while being able to identify it says the noun or the word so they're animals are they kind of nouns uh yes no like <laughs> sometimes you will see some of them operate like that but sometimes not so generally i would say they're used by themselves but i've i've seen a few instances where you can incorporate them and they have functioned like a noun so i just call them words animal words terms it's just easier to remember Okay, so number one, two, and three, the question words are ot nagaliyo doda ne gaig. The second one says o nate nagaliyo doda gaig. The third one says nate nagaliyo doda gaig. Okay, they're all variations of the same meaning, which means what kind of wild animal is this? Okay, so um, the student responds with the answer, the the name for the wild animal, and then nagaliyo dod. Um, Oh, which means this is the kind of wild animal. Or you could also say, here's our gaig or tig, you could say as well. The wild animal, gaig. This is whatever. So I kind of mentioned this already. Animals are not nouns. They just are animals. But there's a few occasions where I've seen them look like, operate like nouns. So don't, I wouldn't get into the pattern of using them as a noun. That's a little bit more down the road. You'll see instances and examples of that um, possibly being used, but they don't operate like a noun I and they don't adhere to a stem. So just FYI, animals right now, just they're just words. So, <laughs> And generally you'll see them by themselves. Like they're not always, in, I've seen a couple, but um, they're not generally incorporated. So just, so you're not. Um, and I can't remember if I, I, th I think I mentioned this when we went over the color section, but um, the translations for these words. So even though some of them, obviously they, we, the translation is the animal, they have like deeper meanings and older translations than what we use today. So like even the word for turtle, there's more of a translation than it just being called a turtle. So same thing for wolf. Um, I'll see if I can try to remember when we get to that section, just address that again, but it's kind of cool. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about that right now. Um, it's something as you continue to learn, learning on a language is a lifelong thing and same thing with English really. So, um, as you continue to learn, you're going to learn probably older definitions or words, um, older translations of words, which I think are very cool because it really shows, gives you more of an idea of what that Ungoho et Neha worldview is within our language. Um, so, yeah. Okay, let's move on. So, um, remember, animals in Oneida language are either wild or domestic. Most of them are wild. Um, it says this section starts on page 41, but again, you may have a different version, so it may be slightly different page um, in your book. So, 
don't pay attention to that page number very much. Just find the section. There's a table of contents in the front. Um, we've changed these books over the years. So the formatting has changed the page numbers. Um, be aware of the whispered endings in the full word uh, when spoken in a sentence. Take notes as needed. Screenshot this video if you would like. The little bear is saying, Zahalega. So that means, are you ready? And this little raccoon is saying, oh, Gail Hall. So that just means I'm ready. So I don't know if they would be talking like that in the wild, but, you know, for learning purposes, they are having a conversation. So, okay. So um, like I mentioned, I went over these questions um, a few slides ago, but again, there's many versions of this, many versions of this same question. And you can see the various versions on the screen. So is kind of the base. It means what kind of wild animal is this? But again, you can shorten that. You could take the nay out. You could say or you don't even have to have nay or nay or gaig. They all essentially mean what kind of wild animal or what kind of wild animal is this if you have gaig. So ot in this instance means what? Ot nate. We've seen these question words when we were talking about the kind of color in the previous video. So um, kind of keep that. Oh, okay. I've seen that before. I'm familiar with that. Means like what? It's a question type of word. So ot nate is like what? Um, ot nate ne galio doda ne gai. What kind of wild animal is this? You can shorten that again the same way we shorten these other questions and taking ne out or also taking gai out. Um, ohnate nagalio doda gaig or ohnate nagalio dod. What kind of wild animal is this? Or what kind of what kind of wild animal? Um, the last one here, nate also means what? Ohnate nagalio doda ne gaig. It's the same base of our question. We just changed. Whoops, sorry. We just changed the question word. What kind of wild animal is this? Nate nagalio doda gaig. What again? Same thing. We're just taking ne out. It is really no change. Um, it's just another version. And the same thing with the last one. Nate nagalio dod. Okay. So um, if you know a little bit more about Oneida, um, you might be asking, how come it is not ni, N-I? Um, it is N-A when we're talking about the kind of. If you have a little bit of um, experience with incorporation or changing nouns um, according to our patterning system, you might ask why it is not ni. It is not ni because that, yes, that does describe the kind of. However, it is describing a different kind of something. It describes the thing in terms of, if you're using a noun, it's like um, physical descriptions generally. Um, when it's na, na is generally used always with animals. And na, when you're talking, and it's used in conjunction with oda, so that is the kind of also this talking about like the kind of species something is. Okay. So there's a difference that is a slight difference. And that slight difference is pretty different in, it's pretty important in the terms of the translation. Okay. So um, we use that with not de na gajida sloda or not de na gana squoda, not de na galyotoda not the ganjoda, like all the kinds of birds, the kinds of fish, the kinds of wild animals, the kinds of domestic animals. You're always going to hear the na because that na, it is referencing kind of, but it's the kind of species. So that's used with animals. Yes, you can say, use it with ni and I, not for species, but if you were to say like, what kind of bird is this? Um, is it a big bird or is it a small bird or is it a... Um, like a, I don't know, a heavy bird or how many birds is there, something like that. Um, that's the specific physical descriptors, the descriptions of something. That's the kind of, okay. So there's different, Oneida is incredibly detailed. So this is the one difference, okay. And it's those small details that really reflect your knowledge of the language um, and understanding the patterns and using them appropriately. Okay, so if that didn't make sense, don't worry about that. I just wanted to briefly share that. If you are refreshing watching this video and refreshing um, more of your foundational aspects and you have some familiarity with that type of word or term or describing that type of thing. So I just want it just FYI, if you're not, don't worry about it right now. That's something we'll get to later on, but just FYI. Okay. So
Um, again, ga'ig, which means this, can be interchanged with tig. I mentioned that in the last video, and that just means that. So, for example, you could say otnagalio doda, tig. Um, oh, I think there's a little bit of a spe spelling error on the bottom. It's supposed to be na. Um, but let's move on. So, nyarikaliodak, nyarikaliodak, our title here for wild animal. We can also use general expressions like natine tig, natine gaig, natte tig, or natte gaig. So, again, we went over these in the last video. So, hopefully, you should be familiar with them. The, these can be used with anything nouns, animals, anything, whatever, whatever it is. Um, they're real general expressions and they're good for new learners to use and they're good for new learners to use in speech with other people, um, and especially kids. They learn so fast, especially if you're just trying to stay in the language. Not de tig. Um, you'd say, not de tig. Oh, oh, gah, you do sleep. Okay, so that whole exchange um, is in Oneida, but these are real general expressions you can say and use. So again, those were not de ne tig, not de ne gaig, not de tig, or not de gaig. Okay, let's move on. Um, so I went over the questions. How would we answer that? So the responses of the wild animal sections um, can be in this structured format. So just be aware of li literal translations up here in the corner. Um, gaig, which means this, but it can be interchanged with tig, which is that. Okay. So again, there's so many variations. I do not have every single one of them that exists on this screen. I just give you a bunch of examples, um, to give you some idea of different ways to say the same thing. So when you ask the question, not de negalio do de negaig, what kind of wild animal is this? You can respond. The wild animal is going to be first in your sentence nagalio toda ne gaig okay so you're saying basically blank is this kind of wild animal or this is the kind of wild animal this is so that's like a literal translation um or you could always say it as like whatever is this kind of wild animal or is this wild animal there's just like so many ways to say it um, but yeah, again, just be aware, be aware of the literal English translations and then just more of a general Eng English translation that makes sense um, in English. So there is a lot that goes on into language learning. <laughs> There's a lot of small details you pick up when you learn a language. Um, so you can also respond and say it this way. So you can say your wild animal, Nagaliotoda Gaig, and that is basically saying whatever you're talking about the wild animal is this kind of wild animal or is this kind of wild animal or is this wild animal it's the same thing um <clears throat> so basically it's just taking the same phrase and you're shortening it or in the bold here your wild animal you can just say that too <clears throat> so you're basically just saying whatever is this kind of is the wild animal or the kind of wild animal. Um, so that is the general sentence structure. Again, this is the question and the response are structured very similarly. The question, the difference from the question is there's a question type of phrase used with it, which is not the. OK, that's indicating that, that 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 is a question. There's other question words we have, but this is one of them. And so just put that in your memory. Um, and so how do we know that this is the answer? Well, the wild animal, whatever, whatever animal you're saying is included in the response. So that's how you know that that is that. Um, so you can also structure it this way. The wild animal here on the bottom. This is whatever. Or it's just a less formal way to say it, I guess. And then same thing, whatever your animal is, gaig. So let's move on. Um, I already mentioned this. You can say it with tig, your animal, ne tig, or whatever your animal is, ne gaig, or just tig or gaig. Okay, so we're going to use some examples here to show you what that is. But I just wanted to show you many options. <laughs> so let's get started with our wild animals. The first one is Otahyun. The full word is Otahyuni. So remember I said something about um, 
these this so this word means a wolf but i i said something about older translation so otahyun means more than just a wolf okay so this animal is one of our clans and it's real interesting because the clan's responsibility is they say it's like a pathfinder or it's meant to help people on some type of journey or path or be a leader in some aspect. Um, and so there's a lot of meanings for um, that that word. But the word otahyun, otahyun, the ha is a path. The yun or the uni is um, make. So it literally means make a path. It makes a path. That's more of a literal older translation of this word. Oh, it makes a path. What is that? Oh, that's the wolf. Okay. So even though I have the meaning wolf, just be aware that there is a deeper, deeper meaning of all of these words, every single word in Oneida. And that is found examining the roots. So kind of cool okay so it's just a side note of more information um so otahyun otahyun is the word for wolf um so i'll say it again the full word and then the word with the whispered ending and then i just want you to practice that pronunciation otahyuni otahyun okay so that's our word for wolf. Otahyuni nagaliotod. A wolf is the kind of wild animal. Okay. So you could also say otahyuni nagaliotoda gaig. This is this kind of wild animal is a wolf. Or you could also say otahyuni ne gaig. This is a wolf. Otahyuni gaig. This is a wolf. There's so many ways to say the same thing. You could say again, otahyuni nagaliotod. Otahyuni negaig, otahyuni gaig, or a longer version using this nagaliotod, otahyuni nagaliotoda ne gaig. This is, this kind of wild animal is a wolf. That's basically what you're saying. So let's move on. <clears throat> ah, no, well, ah, no, well, no whispered ending here. It's a turtle. Ah, no, well, nagaliotod, also one of her clans. Oh, gual. Oh, gual. Oh, guali is a bear. Sorry, I'm going to keep going. <laughs> um, Just because I'm recording this video like all the way through. So, oh, guali. Oh, guali is a bear. Oh, guali nagaliotod. A bear is the kind of wild animal. Oskanundu. Oskanut is a deer. Okay, so try that. Oskanundu. Oskanun. So again, this has a whispered ending, and then the full word is oskanundu, whispered ending, oskanut. So if you're saying it in a sentence, like this example here, oskanundu, nagaliotto. This next one is a chipmunk. Johyokwa is the full word. Johyokwa. Whispered ending, johyok. So try that. Johyokwa. Johyok. Sentence example. Johyokwa nagaliot dod. This kind of wild animal is a chipmunk, or a chipmunk is this kind of wild animal. Um, there is multiple pronunciations that I've heard for this word, so I'll try to go over two of them. Um, chunkalo, chunkalola is one pronunciation for rabbit. I have also heard tsunkalo. Or tsunkalola for rabbit. Okay, so just FYI, this is um, the word for rabbit, but it has a couple pronunciations. Okay, so tsunkalo or tsunkalola, chunkalo or chunkalola. Okay, so the just one of those pronunciations used in a sentence. Tsunkalola nagaliotdod, a rabbit is this kind of wild animal. Undilu, undilu. Undil is a raccoon. Undilu. Undil. 
andilu. Used in a sentence, andilu megaliotod. The next one is jigwilat. The full word is jigwilandu. Okay, so I'll say it again, both of them again. Jigwilandu, jigwilant. Squirrel. Used in a sentence, jigwilandu in a galiotod. Squirrel is this kind of wild animal. Next one, skatnux. Full word is skatnuxa. So try the full word, skatnuxa. Skatnux. That's a fox. Skahnaksa nagaliotod. Fox is the kind of wild animal. And this one is so cute. Anidas. Anidas. No whisper in here. It's just the word. Anidas for skunk. Anidas nagaliotod. Onungot. Onungot. Onungot is a weasel. Onungot. Onungot nagaliotod. And I think this is our last one here. Onhet. The full word is onheta. That's a porcupine. On hate. I believe it um has to do the meaning of the word has to do with um like the pines, the like the needles or like the pines of the body. Cause I believe porcupine is like one of the same words for like a pine tree, I believe. Um, it has to do with the pines because that's what that animal looks like. So um, but yeah, on heta is a full word. So try on heta. And now try the word with a whispered ending, on hate. So the word in a sentence, on hate da nagaliot dod. On hate da nagaliot dod. Okay. So again, just be mindful of the whisp words with whispered endings. Those whispered endings are the underlined portions. Again, they're either not spoken or they are literally whispered. That's the old way of doing it. Um, and that the full word is how it is used in a sentence. Okay. So I know you're probably like, geez, Rosa is a stickler about this. <laughs> Um, yes, because it is an important aspect of our language, um, especially when it comes down to grammar and punctuation, because when we use that in an actual conversation or in a story when it's written, that whispered ending is the end of the thought or the sentence or orally, that's the end of the statement or the sentence that you're saying. So it's important because we don't like use like periods or like uppercase letters, even though we kind of do and kind of use them and teach them but it is just be aware of that I guess and it really boosts your speakership and it refines it in a way that is reflective of how the language changes how it exists and how it functions okay it demonstrates your knowledge of the language Okay, so all of the words, again, I want to go through them and have you practice the pronunciation. I don't think I have the list, um, but I'll just say the meaning. So otahuni. So go ahead and try the full word otahuni. Word with the whispered ending otahun. That's a wolf. Okay, number two, atnoa. Turtle, okwali. Uh, whispered ending okwal. That's a bear. Oskanundu. Oskanut, a deer, Jolhyokwa, Jolhyok, Chimunk, uh, Chunkalola, whispered ending version, uh, Chunkalo, rabbit, Andilu, Andil, raccoon, Jigwilandu, Jigwilan, Skahnaksa, Scott Knox. Anidas. Anidas. That's a skunk. Um, Onungot is a weasel. Onhe, or the full word onheta, porcupine. Okay, so again, otahyun, wolf, atnowal, turtle, um, okwal, bear, oskanundu, oskanut, deer, johyok, chipmunk, chunkalo, rabbit, andilo, seven, raccoon, jigwilandu, um, squirrel, skahnux, fox, anidas, skunk, onungot, weasel, and onhet is a porcupine. 
Okay. So now we're going to get into the domestic animals. The same thing, um, except our word here is a little different. Nyadiganaskwak. Nyadiganaskwak is all of the domestic animals. All of the domestic animals. Nyadiganaskwak. So it's a little different than our last word, nyadigaliodak. Okay. So nyadiganaskwak. Nyadiganaskwak. Question variations are one, two, three. Ot naganaskwoda nega ig. Or ot nate naganaskwoda nega ig. Or onate, oh, I said that one. Onate, or the last one, nate, nate naganaskoda gaig. They all mean what kind of domestic animal is this? You can also just say if you're responding, naganaskod or gaig. So you can say that as well. Okay, so remember the animals in the Oneida language, they're wild or domestic. Um, this is approximately on page 43 or somewhere around there. It depends on the different format. Just look in the table of contents. Um, so, yeah. So, oh, look, at, it looks like we have two of these domestic animals having a conversation. And the donkey is saying, Zahalega, which means, um, are you ready? <laughs> and the sheep is saying, Oh, well, Gail Hal Nokchi Gale, uh, Aungi Dao. So it's, he's saying, yeah, I'm ready, but I want to sleep. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> but anyway. Okay. So question words. I'm going to try to go through this a little faster because you should be familiar with this now. Um, Other variations are or Okay. They all use the same question word. Um, and they just have shorter variations taking off or nothing. They just mean what kind of domestic animal is this the next question word has two other variations using or same exact formation of the question it's just taking off or using they all again are this exact same meaning of the previous question what kind of domestic animal is this? And then the last one, nate nagana squoda nega ig. Now you're using the question word nate, nate nagana squoda ga ig is another variation, or nate nagana squod, um, which all mean essentially what kind of domestic animal is this. And again, you can switch out ga ig for tig, which means that. Okay, so ga ig just means this. You can say nate nagana squoda tig. Kind of animal is that? That's basically what you're saying. Um, you can also use general expressions like natine tig, which is what is that, natine gaig, which is what is this, natine tig, what is that, and then natine gaig, what is this. Okay, so let's move forward here. We asked questions. We talked about the question words um, in the two previous slides. Now we're going to talk about the responses to those questions. So question uh, one of those questions was not squad nega ig. What kind of domestic animal is this? Your response is always the animal first, nagana squoda, and then your other variations. So um your animal, nagana squoda, nega ig, or you can also structure it, whatever your animal is, nagana squoda, ga ig, or simply just your animal, nagana squoda. Okay, so again, you see that na because we're talking about like the species of domestic animals. So not ni, not n i. It's knee. Okay. So same thing. If you can all if you wanted to use like a real even more simpler format, you could just use your animal, ne gaig, or your animal gaig. Okay. So <clears throat> that is pretty simple. You can screenshot this and read this. This is basically my general format that I use. So again, you, your other possible responses, if I said not DT, your response could just be simply just the animal, or you could say your animal nay tig, your animal nay ga ig, or animal, whatever the word is, tig or ga ig. Okay. <clears throat> Let's move on. Um, <clears throat> that's the term. <clears throat> it means all. Of the domestic animals are all kinds of domestic animals or different kinds of domestic animals. So let's talk about the words for those. So our first one is ale hall, my favorite. <laughs> um ale hall ale hall not gonna explode. Um also, okay, remember how I said there's always like older words and roots in these in these words. So even though we know ale hall is a dog, <clears throat> a real interesting side note here this l h a l or this l h also it has to do with being ready 
that question I was talking about in a few earlier slides, Zahalega, um, you hear the L-H-A-L, that is the root to be ready. And that means like it's ready. This, this, this animal is, he's always ready. He's, I mean, if you have a dog, you know, he, they're just always up for anything. So, and they're always ready to do whatever you want them to do for the most part. So that is how they have their name. That's how they got their name. I guess you could say that's more of a contemporary name, obviously, but, um, it's interesting. It's very interesting how we view certain things and make words up for them. That that skill right there is how you make new words, actually, because sometimes, you know, people might say, well, we don't have a word for that. Well, we can make a word for that. <laughs> we can always we can make a word for anything. We've made words for computer, copy or phone. Those are new new things we have in this day and age. But we've made words for them because we've used our worldview and how we describe things. Oneida is very um, description and verb based. Um, or action oriented and that's how we make new words so that same thing that I just talked about that's basically how you make a new word so you just think about what it does and that's how you make the new word so ale hall ale hall is a dog ale hall ale hall naganaskoda is how you can use it in a sentence dog is this kind of domestic animal um, or you could say ale hall ne gaig this is a dog or ale hall gaig um, so another way to say that um, the ghost my second favorite, just kidding. <laughs> um, Dagos, Dagos, Nagana Squad. Cat is this kind of domestic animal. So, Gosadas, Gosadas, Gosadas is a horse. Gosadas, Nagana Squad. Horse is this kind of domestic animal. So, what is a domestic animal? I forgot to mention that. It is a farm, a, a, like a farm, farm animal or a pet. It's like animals that people own. Okay, that's what the domestic animal is. Um, because if you learn the noun for um, just simply just domestic animal, it's ganasqua. That is translates to, yes, a domestic animal or a pet, but it has to do with like, um, like the ownership of something um, in terms of like, this is yours, like for saying um like a pet is something you own so not not necessarily possession but it's this animal that you are in charge of <laughs> so there is a deeper meaning to that word but um and there's other some mm, more inappropriate ways to use that word as well but it is essentially that concept it's that concept of a pet or a farm animal that is that you own that's yours that you are like in charge of so um it loosely loosely educationally per for educational purposes it loosely also translates to um what they have called like a slave in terms of animals and so that's why that's where that concept is kind of derived from um so that is the way in which it's used not it's not used like that anymore but it's used obviously a pet is that's you own the pet you own the farm animals those are yours and so that's that's the difference between the wild animals and the domestic animals linguistically in the term that you're using okay so i know if you watch these videos you'll hear me kind of like sidetrack a little bit here and there but it's just because I there's other information that sometimes provides more context to the topic we're talking about so I think sometimes it's important to share that so don't worry about any of those meanings of Nyadiganaskwak or um, that right now you will learn more about that later on right now I just want you to know wild and domestic animals really those are the two things that I want you to focus on right now Okay, so gosadas, gosadas nagana squoda, horses, this kind of domestic animal. John Huskolo, John Huskolo is a good word. Um, cow, John Huskolo nagana squoda has to do with hips. Um, on husqua, um, if remember the word, our noun for on husqua, which is pants, is the same root, the on husqua, that is um, actually has to do with the hips. So that's like how it is described. So very interesting. Roots are all connected and and used to describe different things and pants obviously you were pants on your hips so that is you would see why those roots are similar so everything is connected in oneida um 
in the language. So John Husqualon or Dion Husqualon, you may hear it like that too, pronunciation wise. So there can be varying pronunciations of these words. John Husqualon or Dion Husqualon is fine as well. It just means cow. Gaia Douglas, Gaia Douglas say, Gaia Douglas say. This is a good one too. It has another meaning. Um, Gaia Douglas, this yad, y a t, in the word means a body. Um, and then the um, this ending, the glass <laughs> or the glass, it means like to be smelly, to smell bad specifically. So it's like it's saying that its body, its body smells bad or its body stinks. That's what the word for goat means, actually. So. <laughs> I mean, if you've ever been around a farm, you know. So it's like it is um makes sense. It makes sense. Okay. So just FYI. There's some real interesting meanings that you will find. Even I mentioned the word about Ganasqua or Nere Ganasqua, like the deeper meanings that those words have. They're very interesting. They are also very, they're very good in understanding the history of our people um, as well. And because there's a lot of history in the language. And so it's, it, and they all reflect different time periods sometimes too, like of our people or whatever, we're, what's happening at that time. So yeah, it's, it's just fascinating. I think it's fascinating. So anyway, Gaia Douglas is a goat. Gaia Douglas, Gaia Douglas say is the full word for goat. Um, Gaia Douglas say Naganasquod. Goat is this kind of domestic animal. Guskus, Guskus is pig. Guskus Naganasquod. Pig is this kind, is the kind of domestic animal. Sik Sik, Sik Sik is a sheep. Sik sik nagana squad. Sheep is the kind of domestic animal. Um, this was a little longer. Deva juntes, deva juntes cosadas. Deva juntes cosadas is the full word. Deva juntes means it has like long or tall ears. Um, like a horse with long or tall ears. That's kind of what it's saying, which is a donkey. So deva juntes cosadas. Deva juntes cosadas. Okay, so try that. Deva juntes. Cosadas. De Bajuntes Cosadas Naganas Quod. A donkey is the kind of domestic animal. So these are our words again. I'll go through them. Eohal. So go ahead and try them after I say them. And if they have a whispered ending, I'll say both versions. Just say both after I say them. And then I'll say the meaning. So Eohal. A dog. Dagos. Cat. Cosadas. Horse. John Husqualont. How? Gaia Douglas say. Whispered ending. Gaia Douglas. A goat. Guskus. Pig. Sik sik. Sheep. Dewa juntes. Gosadas. A donkey. All right. So we learned a lot of different words here today. A lot of different words. Okay. So I'm going to go through them again. Same thing. All of them in a list. Because when I go through them and I first introduce them, obviously, I kind of stop and share a little bit more about them or do some practice. But I do like having just a quick run through of the entire list of words, especially when you're working on pronunciation, especially when you're studying. So I'm going to do that and you can just listen and then also pronounce them. So I'm going to say it. I want you to repeat it on your end. So Otahyun, Otahyuni, Wolf, number two, Atno Wal, Turtle, Okwali, Okwal, Bear, number four, Oskanundu, Oskanut, Deer, five, Johyokwa, Whispered ending, Joe Yoke. Chipmunk, six, Chunkalo La. Chunkalo Rabbit, seven, Undealu. Undeal. Raccoon, eight, Jigwilandu. Whispered ending, Jigwilat. Scott Nuxa, number nine. Try that, Scott Nuxa. Whispered ending, Scott Nux. Fox, ten, Anidas. Skunk, 11, Onu Goat, Weasel, 12, Onheta, Onheta, Porcupine, Domestic Animals, Ale Hall, Dog, 2, Dagos, Cat, 
Three, Gosadas. Horse. Four, John Husqualon. Cow. Five, full word, Gaia Tagalase. Whispered ending, Gaia Tagalas. Goat. Um, six, Guscus. Pig. Seven is Sik Sik, which is a sheep. And then eight is Dewahuntes Gosadas. Try that, Dewahuntes Gosadas. And that is a donkey. All right, so those are our words. You can take that. You can screenshot this. So again, it was Otahyun, Atnawal, Okwal, Oskanut, Johyok, Chunkalo, Andil, Jigwilat, Skatnax, Anidas, Onungot, Onhate. Those were the wild animals. Domestic animals, Eahal, Dagos, Kosadas, John Husqualot, Gayat Dagalas, Guskus, Siksik, Dewahuntes, Kosadas. Okay. Um, let's see, we're not going to do that. These are some old activities I used to do, but I will do a few activities with you on here as you're reviewing. So if you're just learning this, you don't have to do this, but you can just follow along. If you are practicing and studying, you can come back to this video and try to respond um, at, at, with your practice. Okay, so um, what kind of wild animal is this? So remember, you can respond simply with just the wild animal, like number one, or you can respond with the animal plus Nagalio Dod. Okay, so I'm just going to like point to one and hopefully you can see my little arrow. Um, and I want you to respond. And then I'll give you a little time. If, the, if you need more time, just pause the video. Um, and then I'll respond with the correct answer. So, Nate Nagalio Doda Gaig. Skanaksa Nagalio Dod. So that is a, that's a fox. I'll do a couple more. Nate Nagalio Doda Gaig. Jigwilandu Nagalio Dod. Nate Nagalio Doda Gaig. Ah, no, wow. Ah, no, wow. Let's see. Let's do la one more. This last one here, way down in the bottom corner. Not in a galio do da gaig. On hate. On hate da na galio do. Okay, so those are domestic animals. Again, you can screenshot this. You can print that. You can cut up those pictures and play like a memory game or put them on flashcards. And it'll just help you. So this first one is Otahyun. Next one next to it is Atnowal. Next one is Okwal. And these are our three clans. Um, Oskanundu. Jolhyok is the last one in the first row. First one in the second row. Chunkalol. Next one is Andilu. Next one is, which is a squirrel, Jigwilant. Jigwilant. Fox, Skatnax, Anidas. Hopefully you can see my arrow. I'm trying to point at them at the same time. Um, Onungot is a weasel. And on hate is a porcupine. Okay, so mix them up. You can take another picture. I like to do them in order and then I mix them up for when I teach this. And this is another little chart you can use if you want to make flashcards. You can screenshot this. You can just pause this too. Like if you wanted to pause this and try to go through all of the th um, names of the pictures on the screen by yourself, that's like a good way to study. You can use this video to study as well. So um, if you want to write out the meanings, you can write them out too. So Otahyun is the first one. That is a wolf. Atnowal is a turtle. Okwal is a bear. So you can use this to do the same thing and just practice writing. You can do it the other way and you can, okay, well, this is a wolf. What is the word in Oneida? Otahyun, oak turtle. Atnowal, oak squirrel. Jigwilant, weasel, onungot, fox, skatnax, whatever it is. You can also screenshot this. You can print it and you can cut that up and just, again, do the matching or the memory game. Just pick it up and it says wolf. Okay, wolf is otahyun. It just helps you. It's another tool to help you practice, to help you study. Um, let's do this one with the domestic animals. So our question word is not dinagana squoda nega ig. So you can respond with just the domestic animal, or you can respond with the domestic animal in a structured formal sentence with nagana squod. So I will ask the question just for maybe three of them. 
I'll point. I'll do one in each row. So nati nagana score ga ig. So the second one in the first row. Dagos. Dagos nagana squad. Nati nagana squad ga ig. The first one in the second row. John who squalon. John who squalon nagana squad. Um, and then we'll do the middle in the the bottom, the bottom row. Nante nagana squad ga ig. Six 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 nagana squad. So that is a little activity, a review activity. Okay. You could screenshot this and print this also. Feel free. Same thing here. You can go through all the animals just studying. You could pause this. I'll just do a practice sample for you. So if you're using this picture to study, you could say, let's just stop and review. Okay. Here's the picture of a dog. Oh, that's Elha. Picture of a cat. The ghost. Horses. Oh, that's Gosadas. Cow is John Husqualon. Goat is Gaia Douglas. Pig is Gus Gus. Sheep is Sik Sik. De Wahuntes Gosadas is a donkey. Okay, so you could do that. You can print this, do matching or flip it over or use it to make flashcards either. Or you can do whatever pictures you want to use on your own. That's cool too. Um, mix them up. This is just a, the same exact pictures. They're just mixed up. Okay, because sometimes our brains, I have noticed as a teacher, sometimes we can get our brains caught up in the memorization game. So we don't want you to necessarily memorize that. We want you to become familiar with them through practice. But when they keep when you keep the same structured list, your brain will memorize the list and the order of the list sometimes. So not all the time, sometimes. So I like to mix it up because I want you to become a very good speaker and I want you to be a critical thinker and pick up the small nuances and patterns of our language. So as you can tell, this is why my videos are so long. So <laughs> so okay. So anyway, moving on. Same thing. Here's another um study tool you can use. You can write them out. Oh, Ale Hall is a, is a dog. The ghost is a cat. Gosadis is a horse. And so on. Same thing. You could do it the other way. Flip flop it. Here's the English. What is the word for dog? Ale Hall. You could write it. You could practice writing it. When I first started learning this, I would write it out too because I wanted my spelling to be done really well. And spelling, I wouldn't say is necessarily the focus, but it is helpful, especially once you get later on, you want to learn how to spell. Not necessarily like, accents and stuff but yeah you should know how to spell the word like ale hall um so it is uh, help helpful to write do some writing practice as well so listening speaking writing it's all important so figure out ways to evenly dedicate your time to practicing all of those when you study this set of words okay so again dog is ale hall cat is the ghost and so on okay um so these are the samples for the questions. Again, you can use this if you would like. Screenshot it. Um, let's see. I am going to move on a little past this. This is what I use with my students when I teach them. So I'm not going to go over this um, in the video, but I did want to do a few activities with the screen. Okay, so these are individual words and pictures. So the question is, Napte nagalio toda gaig? And so if I'm the teacher teaching this and we're doing a review activity, this is how you would, you would just respond with the word. So you can go ahead and try, what is this called in Oneida? At Noel, at Noel. Okay, same thing here. Not de nagana skoda gaik. Eelha. So notice I've mixed up the wild and the domestic animals. Not de nagali otoda negaik. Onun goat. Onun goat is a weasel. Not de nagana squoda gaig. De mahuntes cosadas. Not de nagali otoda gaig. Chunkalo. Chunkalo. Not de nagali otoda gaig. John Husqualo. Not de nagali otoda gaig. Jigwilant. Not de nagali otoda gaig. Scott Knox, not de nagalio toda gaig. Gosadas, gosadas, not de nagalio toda gaig. Andilu or andil, not de nagalio toda gaig. Anidas, yep. Not de nagana squoda gaig. Dagos, dagos. 
Nantinagalio Todagaig. Oskanud. Oskanundo is the full word. Nantinagalio Todagaig. On hate. Nantinaganas Kodagaig. Gaya Douglas. Nantinagalio Todagaig. Okwa. Nati nagana skoda kaig. <clears throat> sik sik. Nati nagalio doda ne kaig. Joh yok. Nati nagana skoda kaig. Gus gus. Nati nagalio doda kaig. O ta yun. Yes. So again, I went through this really quick. You can pause this video after I ask the question and try to respond and then play it and hear the correct response, okay? That's all that is set up for. Okay, so this is an, a little activity. I'm not gonna go through this, but um, you can screenshot this and use this to study. Same question, all the animals are labeled here with a little star. So like, if you wanted to be like, okay, well, what is whisk or five? Oh, that's a oskanundu, or what is seven? Oh, that's an anidas. Um, same thing with these domestic animals here. So, oh, what is what is four? What is gaye? That's guskus. Or six, six, six. That's um, a sheep. Okay, same thing. So, I think, oh, there's a few others on here too. So, not to this is just translation practice. So, I do all these real easy, small activities, but really they're strengthening your translation skills because you will inevitably do that as part of your work here. Um, as a learner, as a speaker, and um, being bilingual is incredibly um, beneficial to the brain and to overall well-being, and it just creates new neural pathways in your brain that enhance problem-solving skills, critical thinking, all of that. I mean, obviously, if you can't tell, even though I'm teaching this, I'm always detail oriented about these small aspects but also the big aspects of the language because you put all those things together and that's what creates your speakership it's kind of like a puzzle you're putting all these pieces together so you could do a brief activity like this not to nega ig it says okwal which is a bear so it's just translation what's the translation gosadas horse joel yoke chimunk notice there's no picture here this is strictly translation practice sik sik sheep and so on. Okay, so I think that's as far as I'm going to go here. Um, you can use these other slides here. I'll just briefly click through them, but you can pause it if you want to do the same activity here just to work on that. But I believe that is our last activity for reviewing this topic. So here's a few more slides if you would like to use them for practice. Again, you can just pause it, you can screenshot it. I know I'm kind of going through it fast, but just the purpose is for you to pause it and um, use it if you would like to do it in that way. Okay, so um, that is it. That is it for our video today, Toginik. Um, we finished the first book. Yay! This was a lot of content in all of these videos. So um, mastering all of this content creates a very strong foundation um, of your language acquisition and building on that foundation in later years to develop your proficiency. So, Toginik, um, that's all. Um, so, Yamako, thank you again, and Nagiwa, and um, you will see more videos that come from the second six month book soon, probably within the next year or so. And those will advance your skills and talk about more in um, advanced verb conjugations. So, Atoginik, Nogiwa.